we have a Suzuki Quad Sport. I got a couple of these actually. One has a variety of different issues and this one is definitely the same. Um, first issue, the battery is dead. So I had the battery charging all night. That should be good. Story is this person was using it just to kind of get it off the trailer and then it died. So, it's interesting. Let's check the usual suspects. Let's see if there's any gas in it. Most definitely is fuel. seems to be pretty okay. Air filters in there. Nothing seems to be out of the ordinary. To take this off is a real pain. I might have to. Like all these old plastics. So I've had to do something like this a couple times to this um, style of engine. It's actually the exact same year, except it might be two years newer. Um, it seems like a 2004 is for whatever reason. Their valves are just horrible. Um, so much so that I've had to redo a couple heads on them and redo, just buy a whole new valve, or not valve, but new heads with valves. So I'm hoping that's not the problem. So let me get the battery installed. We'll turn it over, see if it has compression. Um, it's in neutral already, so always keep your, make sure it's in neutral. Um, you should be holding down the clutch anyway, but just to make sure, leave it in neutral. Um, okay, let me go ahead and put the battery in. I'll be right back. Okay, so it's on. Side note, I really hate putting batteries on. I don't know why, it's just one of those aggravating things. Anyway. Um, just trying to remember where the fuel shut off is. I think it's over there. No, that can't be right. There has to be a fuel shut off somewhere here. Oh, here we go. It is on reserve. primary because I'm not going to lie this wouldn't be the first time I had received something like this where it was legitimately just on the wrong fuel setting so let's give this a shot we're on neutral on run uh, where's the choke choke You can tell there's some compression. So we're not dealing with a long motor over here. Let's take off that air filter and put in a little bit of. It just comes with like this little weird little um, attachment. Um, here we are. Oh, there's a screen. 
that's why. <sighs> Forgot about that. Why did this screen behind the air filter? I don't know. be taking off a carburetor. Let's see here. Let's try that a little bit more. here to get the carburetor off. We're going to turn we might have to take this off. I hope not. Because that'd be aggravating. I don't think so. I think we just need to take this boot off. Take the boot for the other side off. Which is probably the best done on top. Yeah, and then it should drop off enough to at least get the, the lines off and get some tools. So it, it kind of occurred to me, I had a couple of these. Um, they had spark, but it's very, very weak spark. Let's take a look and see if we can not look at the spark. This is a different spark plug that I just took out. The boot to look at it and just put a different one in. Am I going to be able to see that? Well, let's hope. There's the coil. Looks kind of bad. A little rusted. We are definitely having intermittent spark issues. I'm going to clean up that grounding port and test it with the ohm meter and see what we get. So this post was completely rusted on. Yeah, and the other side isn't look too, looking too healthy. I'm going to clean that up real good and see if that brings back spark. So, after a lot of disassembly, got into this point. Turn it on, kind of. Well, it's 
because it's not charged. But I believe the CDI is bad because no matter what I do, I can only get one spark, and that usually means a fried CDI. I tested a whole bunch of other things. Nothing. I took off the coil, cleaned it. Um, your owner's manual will tell you how to test the coil. Mine, you just kind of take the terminal and connect it to the end of the spark plug boot or terminal to terminal. There's a couple of different ways. Um, that's in there. So now the CDI is that black box. I need to get order another one. The unfortunate part about it is like a hundred bucks. So it's not going to be here for another five days. Well, it's unfortunate, but got to do what you got to do. So I'm going to get that ordered and bring everyone back. So let me go over the, how I found that out. Um, the battery's fine. The relay is fine going from the battery. Tested all that out. It clicks. has resistance. It's fine. All that really is is like a doorway. It's not really there to regulate anything. Turn the switch on. It's on. That's the end of it. Fuse is fine. Stator, I was told, has been replaced. Tested it. It's fine. Um, all the connections are good. So the only thing I could come up with is that it's kind of hard to test a stator. There are ways. Um, and I did everything listed on the webs on their service manual. As far as I can tell, everything is good to go. Um, so now, we're just going to do the stator, install it. There's really not too many other things. There's something else. I forget exactly what it's called. Some type of rectifier. But there's this. That's not it either. Because I already have a couple of them that I've replaced before. There's Garage Dog. She found a new home. Well, not new home, but a new garage home. She will be laying down in the in coolness since it's summertime. Okay, so that's the, how I deduct it down. There's only so many things on there. Plug is fine, because it does sp spit a little bit. It's not really much of anything else. So it's, it's probably going to be that. If it's not, then I'm going to have to go through every single wire on here, but I already did 99% of it. And they all appear to be fine. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and order it. So, after much deliberation, I discovered that this is probably the piece that's causing an intermittent spark. CDI. Looked up the numbers on it. Bought a new one. It's usually mounted behind here. I just got the new one today. I mean, it just snaps on and off. So now, we have an extra spark plug here, just in case we want to see it. Because I don't know how much fuel is in there. I know the battery is very low because I forgot to charge it. But, um, hopefully there's enough power in the battery to get us started. If not, we'll try taking it back. Plug out and see if there's one. So, Neutral. Let's see. Uh, we also don't know how much fuel is in here, though. Um, let's try to choke. Here. 
There is spark. But as you can tell, the battery is so low, it's having a hard time. So let us charge the battery up, and I'll bring you back. So it's a couple days later. I just connected the tank. Um, the old fuel that was in there, I just put back. It was fresh anyway, and I put it in a clean container, and the inside of the tank looked fine. So like I said, I replaced the CDI. The new one isn't bolted down yet, it's right here. It's still connected. Um, the battery is charged. I would usually put the filter on, but because we're testing it, I want to have the opportunity to maybe spray something down the intake. I'm not going to do that. But let's see what we can do. Um, um, price choke. successful. Carb doesn't seem like it has too many problems at all. Uh, I think it's just time to button up some plastics. Double check the battery's charging. And yeah, that's about it. Um, to double check the battery's charging is take a multimeter, put it on a DC and connect it to the battery and then when you turn it on you should see um, the voltage jump up to like 14 or so volts uh, if you don't then your battery is not charging but considering i know there's a brand new stator brand new coil i remember doing that one now uh, now a new cdi basically every single piece of ignition on this is brand new and charging. I suppose the switch or the um, fuse potentially is a weak spot in this, but I don't think that's going to be too problematic. I think it's pretty much good to go. I'm going to double check the oil. And get this bad boy out. Okay, if you like what you see, definitely keep on watching, definitely subscribe, put your thumbs up on it, and I'll see everyone later. Have a good night. So, we're back to this. I kind of came up with something after I left off. Um, replacing this box is actually one of the more expensive endeavors. This isn't something you do in the very beginning. Um... For no spark, I kind of just want to go over my process of elimination and go from there. One, um, I check to see if every bike will have a certain combination of levers, brakes, clutches, switches, all that stuff um, to be pressed down. Um, 
you need to kind of read your manual. It's usually a brake and a clutch. This was just a brake, but it usually has to be a neutral too. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, I want to say almost every single one of them, assuming that it's not like a... Assuming it's just like a normal one like this where you have to shift through the gears. Um, usually it's just normal to have it be in uh, neutral and clutch. Neutral, when you turn the key on, should have a, a green light for anything else. Um, if not, on this one, I believe first is down, uh, so it's in between the, like halfway in between first and second. Um, so it's a little, it can be a little troublesome to get on, especially when you're wearing flip flops like I am, but it's not impossible to find the neutral. Um, if you don't have a light, it's the gear you put in, if you already know, try to push it, it, the wheels move freely. So there's a way to kind of go around that. Um, second, check to see the battery status. Third, check to see if there's ground um, issues. Maybe it's rusted, um, the connections maybe were eroded or degraded or disconnected in general. So always check the um, ground side first. That's usually the problem. And then, you know, the positive side next. Just overall, just kind of check all the connections. Next, I would check the plug. Um, either you can test it with a multimeter or you can just put a new plug in and see if there's spark. Next, I would check the coil. Uh, the coil, every single manufacturer is going to have their own way of testing it. It almost always involves a multimeter and testing the resistance between the inside and one of the posts. Uh, maybe even between the posts, maybe all both of them. Uh, whatever the manual says, um, look at the specifics on what you need. Next, I would check the stator. That is going to be one of the cheaper items but it's not going to be the easiest one to replace uh, it's definitely a little bit more troublesome than the CDI at least on this case because the stator is behind here um, and then while you're in there um, not starting is a completely different problem but you, know, you should always have spark well, I should rephrase that. Not starting due to a lack of spark, you wouldn't really have to check the timing, but while you're in there, you might as well check the timing with the timing marks. Um, then the last is do the CDI. Like I said, there's really not too many other locations. Maybe in between the spark plug and the stator, if you check to see the switches, um, this one. Check to see if the uh, fuse is blown. If it is, obviously it's not going to work. So in between the plug and uh, the stator, probably should just check that one out next. And there's a couple of them sometimes, so kind of go through one by one. And at that point, if all that is good and your CDI box is cause and it's replacing it will be the good alternative to well only way to really get it started when I also when I mean good connections sometimes a switch can be part of the problem too um, so I mean connections I mean all the connections because at the end of it having checked all that there should be no reason for it not to have spark so keep that in mind um, so I just want to go over. I would usually not instantly just jump to buy a new box because I have replaced a lot of this already on this bike, like I said. It has pretty much all new starting system. Um, well, the ignition system in general. And I feel like that's kind of like also the order of failure. Usually your stator doesn't go bad too often, but your coil is not uncommon. Um, I've had to replace dozens of coils, not too many stators, and to be honest, I think maybe this is probably my second box I had to replace. It doesn't happen too, too often, but it does happen, as we can find out right now. 
but you know, keep that in mind. I'm sure there's probably a different way of doing it, and maybe the manual is a different way of double checking it. But that would be my order, mainly because those are the most common causes going all the way to the least common in my experience on this type of thing. And like I said, this is only for spark. Not the, not starting, not not charging, not anything like that. Only for no spark. Not anything else. It's a completely different story, and we can go over that if you need to. Okay, well, this is the real end of the story. Hopefully I cleared up a few things. Okay, see everyone later. Have a good night, and definitely subscribe, and a thumbs up. Bye.